Hey everybody, Milky Way season is finally upon us here in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm so excited to get out and shoot some Milky Way photos this year. So maybe you guys have been out already or maybe not yet, but I wanted to make this quick video covering how to reduce noise in your night photos. Now these are gonna be things a little bit different than your normal just how to reduce noise video. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about a couple ways that when you're shooting your photos, you can actually reduce the noise, as well as a couple post-processing tricks that I use to reduce the noise. Some of them you may have heard of, others you may not have heard of. So I'm gonna talk through all of that in this week's video. So the first technique I'm gonna talk, tracking or stacking your photos photos. So by getting something that's called a star tracker, you're able to actually track the movement of the stars in the sky, and therefore you're able to get a perfectly sharp picture of the Milky Way at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine minute exposures, meaning that you can have a really low ISO, keeping the noise really low. However, the star tracker does cost money. It is a little bit more to set up, and it's a little bit more to do in post-processing, so a lot of people opt away from that. So if you're not interested in star tracking, uh, I highly recommend that you stack your photos, which is where you're going to take multiple exposures of the same shot over and over again. Then after you have all those exposures, you're going to stack them in something called Starry Landscape Stacker on Mac. So while I will be talking about stacking and tracking, I'm not going to give a full flush walkthrough of how to do those. Um, once you kind of look at both strategies and decide which one you want to do, um, you can do some more research on your own digging into that or feel free to ask a question in the comments. If there's enough people that are interested in seeing uh, one of the methods more flushed out, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, at the end of the video, I'm also going to show you guys a cool little trick that I use in post-processing to reduce the noise um, using a couple of plugins that are really going to help you to reduce the noise in those night photos, which is obviously super important, especially if you're going to be printing your photo or posting it somewhere where it's going to be larger than on, say, a cell phone. All right, so we're going to hop right into Lightroom here, and I am going to talk you guys through stacking versus tracking first. So the first thing that you can see here is I'm going to show you guys a difference between a stacked and a tracked photo. Now this photo here is one that has been tracked, meaning that I've put a star tracker on my camera, which is a little device, and I've tracked the stars in order to create this exposure. One thing you'll notice though is that I don't have a foreground. And the reason is, because when you're tracking, your camera is actually turning and moving in the sky. So your foreground's gonna be blurry. You can see that these little peaks down here are a little bit blurry. So when you're doing this, since your foreground is moving, you have to take a blue hour exposure, which then you're going to blend in Photoshop later uh, to create your Milky Way image. You can see that this is my blue hour shot here. Now this is facing to the southwest, so it is realistic to think that the Milky Way would appear right here uh, shortly after sunset when I took this photo. So basically to take this Milky Way photo, I just moved slightly to the right to get an unobstructed view of the sky. And this is where the Milky Way would actually appear where I had Photoshopped it in. Now, of course, I could have just taken this photo without tracking the stars. I could have got this in one shot, but it would have been incredibly noisy. And so that's what I like about this is it's not noisy because I shot the foreground during blue hour where there was still a little bit of light. And I shot the foreground at ISO 400 and then I shot my Milky Way exposure at ISO 800, uh, 184 seconds, which is about uh, three minutes. At first glance, you may say that this looks just like a normal Milky Way photo, uh, but I actually have a normal Milky Way photo here. This is actually the stacked photo, but let me go to one of the raw images here. And this is another raw image that I took this past year in Utah. So. Uh, this is at ISO 6400, we're at 25 seconds, so as you can imagine, it's going to be quite noisy. I'm also shooting with a Sony a7R 4 which is known for being one of the less noisy cameras. So if you have more of a beginner camera, it's definitely going to be noisier than this. But if I zoom in here, uh, you can see that it is going to be pretty noisy. You can already see it's, it's quite noisy. I'm actually going to zoom in twice here, and then we'll get a little bit better look. So it's not super noisy. You can see that the stars are already kind of streaking a little bit, and I wanna compare that to our tracked photo. So I'm going to select them both and click C to compare. Now on the left is the untracked photo, on the right is the tracked photo. And I will zoom in again, just so that you guys can really get a close look here. I'm gonna keep zooming. We're gonna get really close. So you can see this is the same zoom level. Now, these are both shot at about the same focal length. Uh, I believe one of these is shot at 23, the other one's shot at 18. So it's essentially the same thing. 
Now you can see over here is the individual photo. It hasn't been stacked, it hasn't been tracked. It's just one individual raw photo. Now on the right, you can see a photo that has been tracked, but it hasn't been stacked. So these are both just one individual photo. Now obviously you can see how noisy this is. So let's compare if we were to have stacked these photos here, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second. We'll compare that to the tracked image. So this would be the stacked. You can see that it is, you've reduced the noise quite a bit from the original, but it's still not quite as good as our tracked exposure. And you can do this one of two ways, like I said, um, but if you aren't really into the post-processing, I highly, highly recommend that you stick to this stacking method because it takes less post-processing skill level than this tracking method. Because with the tracking method, like I said, you have to have a blue hour shot, you have to knock out the sky out of the image, then you have to drop that um, sky back into the image. So it does take a lot of skill, a lot of color balancing, and it is a little bit difficult. I'm happy to cover that in a future video if there's people that are interested. But if you are new to night photography, uh, what I recommend doing is doing this stacking method. Now the way this stacking method works is that you are going to take the same exposure over and over again. So you can see that all eight of these shots right here, they are in fact different uh, but pretty much the same. So all that I did is I set up my shutter release to take eight shots, one second apart, 25 seconds each. So they're all the same photo, just taken back to back to back to back. And you take those photos and then you put them in a program called Starry Landscape Stacker, which we're not gonna cover in this video, but there's tons of great tutorials on it online. But you put it in this program, the program is going to align the images for you, you're gonna tell it where the sky is, it's gonna align everything and it's going to magically reduce the noise. You don't really need to know how it works, all you need to know is that it's gonna help you get a less noisy image to get Starry Landscape Stacker. Uh, that is only on Mac, however, if you're on PC, I have heard really great things about Sequator, but I have never personally used it, so I cannot attest to how good it is. So we've got our image here, and we've done everything that we can by stacking it uh, to reduce the noise as much as possible. I've already stacked these eight photos, and then I've imported this last photo here, which is the stacked version. You can see I put dash stacked. That indicates that this is the stacked version of all of these other photos. So I'm actually gonna show you guys a post-processing trick that you can use in order to help you get less noisy photos even after you've stacked, after you've tracked, whatever you've done, um, or maybe you haven't done either and you just need a post-processing trick because you're not in the field anymore so you can't change the way you shot it. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do that. I prefer to do that in Photoshop using a couple plugins. So what I'm gonna do is open this image in Photoshop. I'm just gonna hit Command E to open it in Photoshop and I'm going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. I don't think there is any Lightroom adjustments but I will select it just in case I've done anything to it. And we're gonna let that load out, which is gonna take just a second here. Alrighty, so now that we're open in Photoshop here, I wanna show you guys two really cool plugins that are gonna help you reduce the noise. The first one that I like using is actually the Nick Collection. So I'm gonna go down to Filter, go over to Nick Collection, and it's called Define 2. So I'm gonna click that. Now, a lot of you guys may already have the Nick Collection. If you don't have the Nick Collection, I don't really uh, recommend purchasing it uh, unless you can get the free version online still. I'm not sure if you can or not. I like On One so much better. I've made so many videos about On One. You guys are probably sick about hearing it, um, but I do like On One a lot better, and I'm gonna show you how to reduce the noise in On One just right after this. But if you do have the Nick Collection, give this Define 2 a try. This is a really great way to re reduce noise on night photos and still maintain a lot of those details. So for that reason, I really like using it. And this is really the only thing that I'm using the Nick Collection for these days is to reduce the noise on my night photos. So you can see that it's loading out, it's analyzing, and it does take a second, and now it has analyzed. Now, generally, I find that it doesn't do a great job of selecting a spot. You can see this is the spot it's sampling from, which isn't a very good sample of my image. So I usually switch the method to manual, and then I will actually create my own box. But first, I like to zoom in. So I like to do Command plus to zoom in. Oops, maybe let's go Command minus back out one. And I like to come over here on what would be a pretty good representation of the image, which would be like something in here. So I'm actually going to click this here and we are going to draw our own box. Now, once I've done that, I can actually just come over here and draw the box. Now, keep in mind that it's sampling whatever's inside your box. So if you draw the box really big around a bunch of stars, it's going to reduce the noise of those stars, reduce the brightness, and you just don't want to do that. So when you're using this, what you want to do is select a spot that doesn't really have any stars, perhaps this one right here, and just create a box. And you can actually create multiple boxes if you want to sample multiple spots. And I'm gonna click measure noise. Now that's gonna take a second to load out. Usually once you do this, it's gonna come out really, really strong. 
and you're gonna have to dial it down. So you can see that it's already finished. Uh, surprisingly, usually it's not this fast, but we're gonna actually go ahead and click OK and let that load out. I don't really like looking at it in the Nick Collection interface, so I like to load it out so I can toggle the layer back and forth and I can make adjustments using a layer mask, using opacity, uh, whatever it may be. Okay, so now when I zoom in here uh, and we toggle this, you can see that we've done a pretty good job reducing the noise and it hasn't killed a bunch of the stars. So I'm actually really liking what that's doing. You also wanna check what it's done to your foreground. So you can see that it's also reduced the noise on my foreground. Now, of course, I could use a simple layer mask if perhaps I didn't like what it did to a certain part of the image, but I think it does look fine on this image. So that's how I go about using the Define 2 in the Nick collection for reducing noise. Now, I, so I wanna also show you guys how to use On1 for noise reduction. I really like what they've got going on here. So I'm gonna go to On1 Effects 2021. Uh, with my layer selected here. This is gonna open up the image in On1 where I can make a few adjustments to the noise. So once I'm in On1 here, I can just go ahead and click Add Filter and I'm going to go down to Noise Reduction. Now they have a few different options and presets for noise reduction. I usually like to just do it myself. And so the way that I'm gonna do that is by adjusting these sliders and potentially also the range. So I'm going to zoom in to the sky here so I can look at it a little bit better. Let's toggle this. You can see that it's already done a slight reduction on noise. So this is also reducing um, the color smoothing as well, which is not super necessary on a Milky Way photo, but I usually just leave it at the default of 80. Uh, it doesn't actually do as much as you would think at 80, so I like leaving it there. So the more you increase the luminance, the less noise there will be and the more painterly your photo will feel like it'll feel very smooth and overall just not good. Uh, obviously you can see that this doesn't look good. Um, and if I produced photos like this, I would definitely be the next great painter, but probably not the next great photographer. So way too smooth, not what we want. We do want to add back a little bit of that noise, but what we can do is actually change the detail, which is going to affect how much the details are preserved. So let's see what happens if we increase that all the way and then we increase the luminance you can see that we aren't affecting as much of the noise. So we need to bring the detail down a little bit. And this is actually what I like to do. So I will usually increase the luminance all the way and then slowly drop the detail until I find that it's in a good spot. Now it's obviously still not perfect, but this is just the fact of shooting night photos uh, when you're stacking images and not tracking them is you're gonna get lots of noise. But this looks a lot better than it started with. So we can toggle that right there. And that's looking really good. Now, if you wanted to change what it's being applied to, you could click this here and I could, let's say, just click on the sky here. Now it's gonna be applying less to the rocks or not at all to the rocks because we're sampling from the sky. So this is a great tool to use if you didn't wanna to touch the foreground at all, if you thought the foreground looked fine, you could use this eyedropper here and have it apply to whatever you click on. So it's gonna sample similar colors as well as similar luminance values. So we can also increase or decrease the range if we wanted it to affect more or less, um, but I was actually liking it right there at 40. So that is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that back out and we are gonna compare that to the Nick collection just so you guys can see kind of what both of them do. If you're looking at purchasing one or the other, as I mentioned before, I highly recommend On1 for a variety of reasons. Um, but if you solely just want it for noise reduction, we're gonna compare the two so you can figure out exactly which one you want to get. So this is going to load back out and it just loads on this layer. So let's call this on one and we'll call this one Nick. I'm gonna zoom in here and we'll toggle this. So you can see that the Nick collection has done quite a bit more noise reduction here, but it's also done it in a little bit less selective way. So I do like what the Nick collection's done here for reducing the noise though in the sky. It's done a really good job of not selecting the stars. Um, whereas on one is definitely getting a little more of just everything overall, just a base noise reduction. Obviously we are kind of pixel peeping here. Uh, normally when you look at this, 
at an image of this size and when we're zoomed all the way out, even on this large screen that I have, I still can't tell the difference. So really if you're printing, it's obviously important or if you're looking at your image big or presenting it anywhere big, it's really nice to have low noise reduction. And overall, it's just really nice when you have a nice, clean, crisp image. So that kind of covers exactly what I was gonna talk about with the Nick and On One and how to reduce noise when you're post-processing. All right, everybody, that is a wrap. Uh, as I've always mentioned before, if you guys do want to pick up either the Nick collection or the On One software, I will leave both of those links below. I can get you guys a discount off the On One software. I can't on the Nick collection though, so you'll have to purchase that one full price. Um, but like I said, both softwares are great. I would recommend On One a little bit more, but for noise reduction, I do like the Nick collection. So I wanna thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you guys have any questions about anything Milky Way related or anything photography related in general, leave it down below in the comments. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to make some videos for you guys of content that you guys are looking for. So if there's something that you need help with, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video and we will talk to you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.